Hi guys, my name is Julie. I am from Learn to Play. I am a home daycare provider. Today's video is going to be a little bit different video. For the last couple of weeks, I put out several tour videos. I've done a whole house tour, an infant room tour, an outside tour. I'll link all of those below. And today's video is going to be a small space tour. Now, I am blessed enough to have my whole house pretty much used as a home daycare. I have a finished basement, but I often get the comments that I wish I had your space. I only have one room. So I do have a separate playroom down in the basement, and in this video I have transformed it into a single daycare space and how you could make it work if you really only do have one area or one room in your house for a home daycare. Now, this is definitely for like preschoolers, um, like twos and up. I definitely wouldn't put a, like a one-year-old in this room just because there are small items in this room that they can easily choke on. Um, like I said, I did a separate infant room tour. You could get possible ideas from that. I may do like a collaboration between both infants and preschoolers just to give you an idea of if you only have one room, again, how to make it work for several different age groups. But this video today is pretty much geared towards like ages two and up. I um, had a lot of fun making this video. I hadn't used this room like this before, and I think I'm gonna keep it. I think that I'll see how it goes. I had it up this week for the kids, and they really seem to like it. I'm trying to teach them the concept of staying in one area and not just throwing everything around, and that is the struggle I have using my whole basement, even though I sectioned it off. I mean, if you've seen any of my other tour videos, I'm always rearranging. Um, my group is getting a little bit older, I have two, I have three two-year-olds and a three-year-old and one that's almost two, but they really, they just still don't grasp the concept of not throwing everything around. <laughs> so I hope you get some ideas from this video and let's get started. With the space that we are working with, this is simply just one room on the outside door. You could put this on the inside of the door or the outside. I got that border from the Target Dollar Spot. The rainbows are from the Target Dollar Spot. You could simply just add the children's names on those. And then this cute little welcome sign. I tried to do like a bright, like rainbow theme in this room since it's not that big. And my wall is already green. So I tried to work with the colors that I have. So when you first walk in, I have a little cubby area right here. I believe I got these cubbies off of like overstock.com for $200. I had these bins from before. I just simply added the rainbow um, stickers on there as well. You could put like extra clothing for the children. Even though there's only five cubbies, there's 10 hooks. You can hang their bags, their coats. And then on here would be a great spot to put like their shoes. On top, you could even put like little bins for like take home stuff you know, put a calendar on there, put a clock, a sign-in sheet. So I created four centers in this room. I tried to think what centers do children most use, and I believe I covered all of them. So this first center is the block area. I simply got this rug, probably off of like a Facebook mommy site. I wanna say $5, all these rugs I only got for like $5. I'm cheap, guys, I'm always looking for a deal. That cabinet or that shelf, that white shelf right there, I got from Walmart, I believe for $35. Those canvas bins are probably from Walmart as well for under $5 each. And then the three plastic bins are all from the Dollar Tree. So starting on top, I just simply dedicated one of these little bins that I got from Walmart for all the different kind of cars in here. That way it keeps them contained. And then I just put a picture of a car. I believe this is from the Dollar Tree with their like bulletin board stuff. And then I have some animals. So even though this is a block center, I wanted to give them a couple other choices as well. So starting with the blocks, I'll show you the different kinds. So right here are like the Melissa and Doug wooden blocks. These are cardboard blocks. The children love these because they can build pretty high up with those and knock them down and it doesn't hurt anything. Right here is just an assortment of like plastic blocks they can connect with. Down here are waffle blocks. I'm not sure what these are. They're not like Velcro, but they they like stick together. These are like old school. So I have some of those. And then in here, I just have like the Dupla large Lego blocks as well. So they have an assortment of blocks to choose from. And then I have all these little signs right here. I have like a block center sign. I believe I got 
this off of TPT. And that was probably a freebie. I probably did not pay for it. So I had that white shelf dividing the block area and my next area, which is my writing area. I got this easel from Target, I wanna say for like $40. I'm not sure what the brand is. It's nice because it has these two canvas um, little pockets down here you can put stuff in, but you can get the same one from Ikea for $20. It doesn't have the canvas things, but you can get the easel for $20. And then here I just have some markers, this little bins from the Dollar Tree, dry erase marker, um, or dry erase eraser, my goodness, from the Dollar Tree. And then turning it around on this particular one is a chalkboard on the other side. So the children have like two different options what to do. I put one of those Walmart dry erase tables on here. This was $20. And then I'm gonna show you a couple different suggestions for how to do like crayons and stuff. This little caddy, a mini caddy, is from the Dollar Tree. I simply just made this on Word, put writing box. And depending on what age group you have, you know, if you want to put scissors or not, scissors, glue, markers, and crayons, you could add pencils as well. But that's one option to do things. On this wall, I simply just made like a little bulletin board. All the letters are from Target and the border is from Target. This green, I think it's just rolled paper from um, Hobby Lobby. Very cheap to do, guys. And you can even put like maybe even like clipboards on here. That way you can just clip up their artwork. You don't have to worry about ruining the paper. So again, I have another one of those white shelves dividing this writing area and dividing my dramatic play area. I simply put like a Mr. Potato Head on here. And then down below these bins right here, this one is I believe just Play-Doh. Yeah, Play-Doh and cookie cutters. I love these, these are from the Dollar Tree as well. And then some magnetic letters you can get. I got these shapes from the Target Dollar Spot. You can even get these letters from the Target Dollar Spot as well or Dollar Tree. And then I just put two of the pans from the Dollar Tree on there. And then this container is not from the Dollar Tree. I think this container is from Michael's, but I needed a bigger container to house this. All of this stuff in here is from the Dollar Tree. It's a little like spiral art thing, some little boards. Just like a different assortment of things that kids can use to draw with. And I want to say this container was um, $5. Down below, here is another art kit you could do. I simply just made this on Word. So in here, I only have crayons and markers if you have a younger group. And these plastic containers are from Michaels. They are $1, $1.50 each. And then if you do have older kids, you could simply add like glue sticks and scissors in here. I only allow two kids in the area at a time, so those work out perfect. I have some coloring books at the bottom of here, and then I got these books at the Target Dollar Spot as well. I think it was an eight count for five, maybe $3, I don't think $5. You could put the children's names on the front, and that way they have their own book that they can take to the table and use. These bins are from the Dollar Tree as well. I try to make everything very practical and very cost efficient. Um, if you're just starting out, it costs a lot of money. So anything you can get from the Dollar Tree, I suggest getting it. I have a whole bunch of like scrapbook paper in here that kids can cut or color with. And then the last little bin right there is I just have an assortment of puzzles. So that is it for my writing station. Moving on to the dramatic play area. I did add another little bulletin board. This wall, the paint on this wall is screwed up. That's why I have so much on this back wall. I mean, you definitely don't have to do this much. Those crayons are from the Target dollar spot. I believe it was like a 24 or 36 count for a dollar. Again, that border is from the Target dollar spot. And then this color scheme right here is from the Dollar Tree. So I have vintage toys in here. You can easily just put a regular little text kitchen in here. This is what I have in my house, so this is what I wanted to show you. I have a separate little bin for all the dolls that contains them. One of these foam rugs, or I guess you would say kind of like a foam mat. You can get this at both Target and probably Walmart for like under $10. Then I have just like a little doll cradle. So I wanted to create a little like house area. I have a closet in this room. If this was a separate wall, you could put like a birthday chart over here. 
You could put another bulletin board. You could actually even put something there, but since I use this closet, I didn't want to block it. And then I have a third and final white shelf dividing this area and my circle time area. So on this shelf, I just have more things for dramatic play. I have an assortment of like purses and keys, dishes, food, little pretend phones, Barbies, and then like little shoes and accessories and stuff like that. You could put something on top of here if you have like a dollhouse you want to put on here. That way, if you have like two children playing in this area, they could take things down from that as well if you're in a crunch for space. Each of these areas, I typically would only probably have two kids. So right there, that would be two, the writing center two, and the blocks two. So right now, I mean, you could have six kids in here and I don't feel like it would be completely crazy crowded. And then this last spot is like a little circle time area. Again, I probably got this rug for $5. On the wall, this little color scheme thing, I believe I got from Michaels. I utilized the back of the cubbies. I got this park, uh, pocket chart from Target, I wanna say for $5. And then the little calendar pieces were actually only a dollar from the Target dollar spot. I put like a today is, I think I got those from Michaels as well. And then today's weather. And then the bulletin board border from Target Dollar Spot and this little, whatever these are, these little pom poms are from the tar um, Target Dollar Spot. I think those were like three or five dollars. And I have a little library. I've seen these shelves at like Walmart for like 20 or 30 bucks. I believe I got this from Ashley Furniture. I think I paid a lot. I think I paid like 50 bucks for it. I didn't know. I didn't know you can get them cheaper, so that's kind of pricey. And then I have a built-in bookshelf. So if you don't, you can easily just put a cube shelf somewhere. You can put like two bookshelves. As you can see, this is pretty wide. So this would, once you got an extra wide bookshelf. But all of these containers and stuff are from the Dollar Tree. And it's a great way to house all of your stuff. So let me show you what I have here. On the very top, I have all of my like supplies. So in here, my painting supplies, I have, I use like, um, ice cube trays for paint as well. These are all from the Dollar Tree. You can use marble, sponges, just different kind of things for paint. And then, let's see here. We have an assortment of cookie cutters, some foam shapes for art. These are pretty much like pom-poms, little craft items, some more craft items like googly eyes. Right here is like a sensory bin. You can see just different like summer shovels, frogs, different little animals you could use in a sensory bin. These foam shapes I got pretty much all from the Dollar Tree. I usually use them like seasonal. So I have like butterflies in there, pumpkins in there, just different assortment of that. I have some magnetic dolls, some more sensory items. I believe this is pretty much all shells. And this watercolor one, I have my watercolor paints. And then I got these, I think from Michaels as well. These are great to put water in because they have a lid on them. I have a thing for fake money. This says crayons, but this is just more play. There. Over here, I have the wooden blocks, a whole thing of sensory bottles. And then my last Dollar Tree haul, I found these trays, which are great because if they're working with pom-poms or anything so they don't fly all over the table, you can put them in, they're pretty thick. These trays I got from Goodwill, like last year, I think for two bucks, and there's actually like six of them. And then a couple big felt pieces from the Target Dollar Spot, I think for $3. Down below, I did a teacher's kit. So if you don't wanna leave the room, I kinda just put all the stuff in here I think that I would need. Like markers, permanent markers, stapler, flashlight. In here, I have some gloves, scissors, hand sanitizer, some tape, some extra batteries, just kind of odds and ends stuff for teachers. You could even put a label on that. I love these caddies from the Dollar Tree. You can get those from Walmart, Target, anywhere. This is a whole thing of clips. Now I love these containers as well. These are all from the Dollar Tree. You don't even need to make labels because you can see through them so clearly. So on here, like I said, these are, all these clips are pretty much from either Target Dollar Spot or Dollar Tree. And then just some wooden alphabet ones. Crayons, markers, scissors, glue, and glue sticks. 
The third shelf is pretty much all my paints. Again, you can see everything you have in there. Bingo markers, stampers, all of my little paint brushes, paint accessories, sponges, and two different kind of paints. And then I have shaving cream. That way the children don't have easy access to it and I have to give it to them. So it makes less of a mess. You can do like clipboards. You can give the children clipboards and they can um, color on. I have chalkboards in here as well. These trays are from the Dollar Tree. I'm always saving all like paper towel rolls. So this whole thing is just extra cardboard. I have a whole thing for alphabet letters. Here are some more of those little clothespins. I love these, these are like multicolor. These are all things you can buy, all these letters and stuff from probably Walmart. The Dollar Tree ones are okay, but these cases, I wanna say I got these cases from Walmart or Michaels and they look perfect in there. You can like actually put each letter in there. So I have those, or you can put them, again, in the smaller. I have one just like letters and numbers and stuff. You can divide them out that way as well. Over here are just some blocks. I use one of those cases for my pom-poms too, because that way you can sort them and see them by color. And then I have a whole thing of stickers. These are all, you know, probably a dollar each. I pass those out to the kids. And down below is my library. I try to um, section them off by what kind of books they are. I have some puzzles, some games down here. And this last shelf is like my curriculum, my teacher's planner, different like teaching things I want to go over, like stuff to do with a group. So in here we can do like our letters, we can do our numbers. I have these cards, these like, action cards that I showed at a thrift haul that I found recently. And then this bin right here you can do, I have like felt books. And then I love these kind of things. I got, I think it was like a six pack off of Amazon for $20. They can do this on the carpet as well. And then I have a sensory bin I keep down here. Just so again, I have control of it. Next week is shark week. So I bought some kinetic sand. I think it was like a three pound sand kit from Target for like $13. I'll add some like sand toys in there. And then I just simply have another container all full of like musical instruments. And the last thing I want to show you is this little teacher box I made. So I got the actual box from Michaels when it was on sale for $12.50. I think I have like four or five of these now. And I just simply made this little, um, I don't know, this little label here off of Word. I couldn't get the sticker all the way off because so I wanted to cover it up. And inside, now they come in clear or colored. So since I, I do have one box of color, I combine these two because I only wanted a limited amount of stuff down here. The other ones I can keep in storage, but the colored ones I'm using for all my games. So I have like a letter matching game. I made these little things for Shark Week, these little, I don't know, fish aquarium things on popsicle sticks. That way I, I know what I have here. You can put, you know, different movement cards in there. Um, again, matching games. And that way I know it's not just like a flash card. And then on this side is all like pretty much my flash cards. I have like a counting one. This one, just like, I don't think this is like an ABC one. I think it's just like, what is this? I don't think, I don't know if it's just maybe it's animals. An ABC one. What else do I have here? Oh, I did these little weather cards we can go over. Animals. And then another great free resource would be getting paint swatches from like Home Depot. And you can go over your colors with that as well. So I love this because you can take this outside, you can keep it inside, everything stays nice and neat. The kids can take a container, I can give them, you know, a container, let them go over the flashcards, and then they can bring it back. So that's it, guys. That is the space, like, if you only had one room. I hope that I showed you how you can make it work. I probably wouldn't put more than six kids in here. I don't know, maybe you could do eight because if you had people over here in the story area as well. But I mean, the most expensive thing is obviously this cubbies, Not every, you don't have to do that. But everything else is very, very reasonable, I feel. You can use those little shelves to divide. They, you could also stand them up to make them taller and thinner, but then I like them the way they are because then you can see from one area to the other. 
I got this backdrop off of Amazon for $50. That's another way you can spruce up a room. You can use, you know, so I have this right here. My thought was that to hang up different like artwork on top of there as well. So let me know, did this help anyone? Did it give you some ideas? If you do have a smaller space, I'm gonna link below. I did a whole infant room set up in this room as well. I'll link that video below if you were dealing with strictly just infants. This is definitely more of a older toddler room. You could not put infants in here. <laughs> they would just be a nightmare. But this setup is great to teach children to play in certain areas. Because I know I have a bigger space. My whole basement is my downstairs space. And the kids just throw everything out. They're not playing. I'm trying to teach them to play. Because my children that I have, I have a younger group, they just want to throw everything around. So I'm hoping by having these sections in here, it, you know, I'll be like, okay, you two can only be in the blocks, you know, and then maybe every 10 minutes we rotate and go to different centers. That way it's just not a big open room and they, you know, know that there's rules. You can't just throw everything around. So I'll let you know in a future video if this works. I'm going to keep this like this because I like it. I mean, I design this room specifically just for this video to show people because I get so many comments like I don't have the space you have I only have one room so I wanted to show you what you could do with one room but I actually like the way it turned out so I'm going to keep it like this for a while like I said I'll give you guys an update whether or not it works out so if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you're not a subscriber please consider doing so and I will see you in my next video